Hi guys. We're just waiting for Paris to join. I'm wearing this outfit and this <laughs> outfit I did not feel cool I'm just kidding that's a bad thing to say <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm so happy we're connecting how are you you look good I like it thanks but honestly this is like the best outfit ever I'm in love good thanks to you oh good how are you how are you feeling today I am to be honest, like a bit like emotionally like that, but I woke up for a meditation this morning and like a kind of group meditation and it yeah. really unlocked a lot of like stuff for me. So that's really? true. Like, we don't even like have to go there, but we can, but we can go anywhere you want. I mean, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I feel like I need to say one of them because yeah, it, it helps anyone like and if it helps you, but one of the things that we were doing in the meditation was like focusing on different parts of our body and where we like like store our trauma and one of yeah. the things was like your throat like how yeah. you and that was like you're holding back if you have tension in your throat you're holding back from saying something yes you're not speaking I, your truth yes yeah i didn't i was like what and it made me so emotional because i was like yeah as much as we can talk and as much as we can create like that's not, there's, I feel that I hold back so much. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of us do. Like, even I feel like that too. But I think your throat chakra, what's like most important about your throat chakra, just like, it's really just staying true to who you are and true to what you want and speaking your truth. And, you know, once you start doing that, I think you'll, you'll see a difference. I hope so. So I want to hear so much about you. Okay, yeah, let's start. <laughs> um, so one thing that I love about you is you posted this quote on IG. Um, well, it's actually, well, it was in a caption that you posted, and I wanted to share it with everyone watching. It was, um, let me get it. It was, I'm just going to read it just because I, when I read it, it like sang it like straight to me and it like spoke to me like on such a spiritual, like deeper level. And I was like, oh my God, I, I love you even more. <laughs> so, um, you posted a quote about like self-reflection mm -hmm. and it said, um, self-transformation commences with a period of self-questioning. Questions lead to more questions. Bewilderment leads to new discoveries. And growing personal awareness leads to transformation in how a person lives. Purposeful modification of self only commences with re revising your mind's internal functions. Revamping internal functions eventually alter how we view our external environment. And I love that so much. And I wanted to, like, get your, like, take on, like, a what that meant for you and like how that's like relating to your journey mentally and physically right now. Um, you know, maybe, yeah, we can touch on that. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think I was, well, this whole experience and just being in quarantine, I, it's such, it's so fascinating to experience yourself for the first time. And I also, I feel like, super super fortunate that I'm even able to stay inside most of the time like that is ridiculous that I'm even able to do that and so of course there's so much there even that you're yeah. like oh gosh like I just like pray for everybody that's outside front workers frontliners that are doing so much and like I there's no way to even thank them so yeah. I want obviously that's really important to to mention but then the other side of it is you know, I'm a songwriter, and so so much of my time is 
like self-reflecting and like writing with other people and helping other people and you do neglect a lot of yourself because you're outpouring so much you're just like okay go 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 and then you turn around and the next day you're like wow I just I haven't checked in on myself at all and I feel so deeply insecure I you know I can't like I'm not good enough I'm not this enough I'm not you know whatever it is for any person and so for me what I've been doing during this time is just reflecting and and working a lot on self-care and like reading quotes like that that are like whoa if I could like face if I can look into um this deep deep part of myself like maybe it will unlock some sort of truth that is universal and also healing like I don't it's sort of it's weird because yeah. there's so many things that that quote says I'm sort of like wait it's it's so it's so profound I don't even know yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I just got like a chill just listening to you like talk about. And I think so I loved it because when this whole when the closure started happening and the self-isolation and everything and the quarantine started happening, I really from the very beginning, I was like, I'm going to take this time. And I think everybody should take this time to self-reflect and like start that journey within and like what is really important for you. So I love that you are able to do that and um, just changing like your thought pattern will change your environment 100%. Oh my gosh, yes. And I don't know if you felt like this too, but it's so weird. The start of it, I felt like super, super connected. Well, first, really scared. Then yeah, connected. Like, yeah. okay, whoa, so much to be grateful for, so much gratitude. And then it sort of hit a place where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going back into the patterns of comparing myself. Yeah. And like, am I doing this right? And like, am I doing enough? And, you know, all of the sort of pressures that we have as people, but I think especially as women, like, yeah. like oh, I, I don't have this. My body doesn't look like this. And my, like, I had broken out more than me too. My <laughs> <days. laughs> probably see and I probably should like post a picture of the realness but like it's just like and then you're you're so sort of obsessed with that and like yeah what like this is not the point like the point of life is not that we are perfect because nobody's perfect nobody's perfect yeah and you're just like oh my gosh like how and, and the whole thing of like habits like you know 40 days I think to create a habit it's really? Like, oh, I didn't know that. I think I should probably fact check that. Ooh, I need to. I don't know. I, I like that. Forty days for a habit. <laughs> yeah, forty days for a habit. Or That's about right. Free to habit, not break habit. Um, <laughs> but it's like, oh gosh, I guess I didn't get to the forty days because here I go again, just like sabotaging <laughs> myself. But there's so much grace too. Anyway, lots of yeah. Stuff. Awesome. <laughs> okay, well, coffee break. Let me take a switch. <laughs> Um, so do you feel like any of like yourself reflecting that you're going through and like has enhanced your music your writing for people or has it helped you in any way I think 100% yes and it's interesting because well now like I don't I'm maybe people that are watching this know but so I only really have been focusing my time on writing for other people and so I've been pretty connected to that but this whole new level of like doing it digitally doing it virtually yeah is um inter- at first it was really disconnected like I can't do this I was like I can't do this but now I feel like we're connecting in a way because we're all experiencing the same thing, we're connecting in a way that all the other stuff is kind of out the window. Yes. Like, it's like, yeah, we have we have these other feelings, but, like, our guards are way down. We're way more vulnerable because you're like, I'm in my home and I don't really leave unless it's, like, to get, you know, essential. <laughs> yeah. And, and, like, and that's a blessing, totally. Um but yeah, it's just, it's very, um, interesting. And like, yeah, the self-reflecting that everybody's doing like, yeah, whoa, my relationship was not so good. And I broke 
but someone broke up with their partner in quarantine and I'm like yes wow yeah yeah Yeah, like a lot of realizations are happening and like when you're forced to be in a room with someone that you realize you do not compat like aren't compatible with you're like I need to make a change in my home life (laughs) (laughs) I agree and that's and it's a good change and like one thing that we can't change is change and we just have to evolve as humans and learn how to like you know, evolve with the changing times right now. And I, I think that's, it's a good thing to find, you know, because without change, you're not meant to be who you want to be. <laughs> Ooh. Right? I love that. <laughs> also, I'm noticing this is really ridiculous, but your hair looks so good and like color. Oh my God, I did my own hair. Look at how <laughs> my roots were like down to here. And I was like, I can't like look, I can't do these IG lives looking like this. <laughs> So I went to like CVS and it's the only like place open and I just got box. Yeah. I took some box. videos and like did a little tutorial but I haven't shared it yet. <laughs> I see it. My my amazing like um guy that does my hair, he's like gonna drop off a box for um for me, but my hair's brown. Like my hair's yeah. really brown. No, my hair is pretty brown too. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty dark. Like it's like very like you can see this is the natural. It lit up that much? That's wild. I had to do three processes. Dang, I'm <laughs> I, I was a little scared. I was like, am I going to lose all my hair? <laughs> just falls out. You're like, you know what? I need to be humbled. <laughs> yes, you're right. You're like, you're going to need to be with you shave it all. <laughs> Aw. Well, good. Um, okay, so let's, what else? Let's see. I know that, um, I know. Okay, so you're in the music industry. Like, where do you think, like, I I see, like, on social media and, like, online everywhere, like, so many musicians are just struggling right now because their gigs have been canceled, concerts have been canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, people, like, and, like, with music, that's how a lot of artists make money, right? It's, like, their concerts because people don't really, like, buy music anymore, buy CDs or records like they used to. So a lot of their, you know, income is touring. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm, like, so concerned about them as artists. Like, what's going to happen and how are they, like, what do you think? Do you have any ideas or are you kind of, like... I mean, I feel... Oh, gosh. Okay, so basically, as a songwriter, like, you already kind of don't make a lot yeah. unless you have a radio song. Um, so the touring aspect of it is how, like you were saying, that's how everybody makes money. And... I was reflecting about this, but my brothers and I had these shows all of last year and like I flew to New York and did the shows and it was such an awesome experience. And yeah, like I made money from that, that I'm not going to see. And I don't know when, I mean, I saw it already, but I'm not going to get more of it (laughs) anytime soon. And uh, that really kind of, I I wasn't even thinking about that because I've been so in like the creative mode. I'm like, oh yeah, wow, I'm really not, that's how you make money. Yeah. And if, you know, if that's not happening. So my husband works in the music industry too. And a lot of, yeah, like acts have to tour. And so I'm curious, I am curious and I've done some kind of digging, like how, what that's going to look like and how people can still, cause the live show is like how people experience, uh, the music in like the most visceral way, like it's the yes. most like, wash over you way. So yeah. Say. Um, and, uh, that's, uh, is it the same if it's recorded and you're watching it from your living room? I don't know. And then, or is there a way to, my brother and I was talking about this actually to me, like, is there a way to like, and uh, people I know are already talking about this, but have rooms have like less capacity. Like, is that going to be okay? Oh gosh, like smaller venues or something, or they like, you know, like like, break people apart, like to have like one person and then like five seats away, have another person. Yeah. And I do feel like that. I mean, like, I love, I love going to like a good concert, you know, and like, do you feel like it'll take away that energy? Because like, when you go to a concert, you're like bumping up against other sweaty yeah. people and you're just like in there, like, and you're feeding off of each other's energy. And like, that's what, like, you know, these music festivals you go to, like, that's the whole vibe is that you know so it's like is it gonna be the same are people gonna even buy tickets like I don't know what's gonna happen I mean I it's so like 
it's so grand, like a situation that I'm like, I don't even know how, how to process that it won't be that way. And also like, yeah, like it's, it's so crazy because what you're saying is true. So much of a part of the experience is being, you know, shoulder to shoulder with someone or even just looking out to everything and being like, wow, there's so many people here, like enjoying the same moment that, that I am. And yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that's going to have a lot. There's, there's going to be probably variations. People are probably going to do it differently, but I, I'm curious myself. Like, I'm curious too. I'm so curious. And I'm curious how people are going to evolve. Like maybe we'll get those VR glasses and like feel like you're next to each other and like, I don't know, like sit in a steamy like room and like feel hot and sweaty. <laughs> Like, to create, like, that virtual experience. (laughs) We're going to talk to the Silicon Valley tech people about this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like, we should do it. Because then, you know, that would make us, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, good. Um, Well, I feel like if we can get a vaccine and we can get a cure and we can get you know, all of that, like, confirmed, I'm sure we'll, everyone will be comfortable going back to the way concerts used to be, and, you know. I, I hope, I know, it's just so, I was saying to my husband yesterday, like, who, you could have never imagined in a million years that in our generation, this would be, it feels like an alternate universe. Like, it feels like such, I don't know, that's another yeah. I wanted to ask you, do you feel like, because I know we spoke about this the other day, like, yeah. do you feel like your social, like, at least I do, like, I've been so social isolated, like, lately and not seen anyone except for, like, close family. Um, I don't know if I'm, like, ready to go back out. Like, do you feel like that, too? Like, I'm, like, I'm kind of, like, I'm having social anxiety now about, like, seeing people and, like, you know? <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. And And how, like, I think some people, some of my friends are a little bit more comfortable. Like, they're like, it's, you know, at least, like, the future seems more comfortable to them, and they're anxious and excited to get out. And I'm definitely like you, where I'm like, oh, I could just, like, stay here all the time. Like, I think I'm, what is it called? A gore introvert? (laughs) Well, an introvert. (laughs) Where you just never leave your house? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm becoming that, for sure. (laughs) I said, um, I said, uh, arachnophobic, and my husband just spiders, right? Spiders. And all yeah, that. I say it all the time, too. I always get those two confused. <laughs> I'm like, I need that, too. <laughs> yeah, I am that, too. I don't really care about spiders. Oh, I am, like, weird about spiders. I don't know. Daddy long leg spiders, well, those are cool. They don't, like, you know, the... <laughs> You know those? I don't mind. But, like, the ones that you're like, whoa, those have, like, crazy little pinchers. and uh, Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. And, okay, any new hobbies that you've taken up? Are you, like, I well, know. Yes. Actually, I was like, have I? <laughs> I started making pour-over coffee. Oh, I love pour over coffee. Wait, you only now started? <laughs> I never did it. My husband always... Well, first of all, to be fair, I... This is, like, my one spend that I, like, was... I'm just... Well, not any wine, usually, which is another story, but I get coffee... Or I would get coffee out every single day. Every day. Oh. And from the same spot that I go to, it's around the corner. It's a small business called Maru. Yeah. And I went there every day because I was always running late. Yeah, I was always, like, I didn't have beans. Like, I was just like, I don't know. I don't even buy beans. <laughs> so then when everything happened, my husband was only one of us that knew how to make coffee. And uh, he has been working so much. that, And I start my day usually at, like, 12 or 1 yeah. for writing sessions. Um, so I was like, well, I should, I should learn how. So we have, like, we've had this. We have, like, the scale uh, you probably have this, like the grinder, the scale, and the little cute Chemex thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, yeah. yeah. It's so cute. And so I learned how to really make it, and I'm so proud. Like, it feels like such a Isn't it good? <laughs> Doesn't it taste better, too? It tastes so good. I mean, yeah. I think we getting, we're we getting the beans from Maru, so yeah. I think it has something to do with why I love it so much. Yeah. They still make it better. I mean, I, I wish that I could say that mine tastes 
as you, it's almost. Yeah. It's like, shout out Maru. Maru, right? Small business, the first small business. Is this called M-A-R-U? Yes. I think I've, yeah, I think I've been there. It's good. It's After good. Her, when, well, you could actually still go. They, I haven't been, but you can go because I have like just a window that's covering and you can go up and, you know. Yeah, get a little coffee. Thankfully get it, yeah. That's one thing I do miss is going to my coffee shop in the morning and, like, seeing the same people and, you know, that social I interaction. Know. Yeah. Well, soon we'll return. <laughs> this is awesome. and, and you're writing a book. We've always wanted to write a book, and now you are got the time to do it, right? <laughs> yes, and it's been so, like, I'm so excited when I actually can reveal it to people because... It I is can't wait. so fun, and it's a young adult novel, so if you're 32 like me, <laughs> I'm going to, I can't even, I don't want to say my age, like, you, but I for so long was like, should I say, should I say, and now just like walk into sessions, and I'm like, I'm 32, <laughs> you're just like, okay. <laughs> In case you're wondering. In case you're wondering. But my mom, who's on here actually, she oh, looks, she looks so um incredible and I just hope that I can look like that. Oh, shout out to our moms. Giving us the good genes. <laughs> oh yeah, every day, right? <laughs> oh good. I wanna hear though quickly from you, just like the, the fashion aspect of everything like how that's shifting and what you've been doing yeah I mean yeah so fashion you know I mean it's it's like the retail part of it is scary you know because a lot of businesses are closed right now but um or like you know just online and just seeing like Neiman's you know filing chapter 11 Nordstrom closing a ton of their stores um and there's a there's a ton of other but like it, it is a little scary right now um but i think for fashion you just have to be innovative like we started making face masks and we donated a ton of face masks and okay. gifted a ton of face masks to people and that's like our number one seller right now on our website and you know i'm happy that i'm able to provide that for people right now but um i just i hope that this time the fact like during this time of like self-reflection the fashion industry and everybody in it and you know the big people in it can just take the time to like slow down and like really think how the fashion industry is affecting our environment and everything going on you know and like I don't know like I personally don't like the fashion calendar like I've always hated it if you know me and like know me as a designer like I just like I hated following the fashion calendar it was like you have to drop a fall collection at this time oh you missed that window you can't put your fall collection out anymore it's just like why do I have to listen to this calendar like and I put in pressure on like my creativity of like having to create as far as such a deadline and I just am like I'm a small business I'm like I want to just drop a collection in the middle of May like right now like I don't you know what I mean like why do I have to follow it and have six seasons and like I don't know so I just feel like I would love for it to be like just take away those like all those seasons like you don't have to have a collection every three months and you don't have to always have something new and like mm -hmm. I don't know and just like give designers like more creative freedom in the fashion industry and like not have to follow that calendar that's what I would love to see yeah. change in our industry in the new normal that we're going to go into <laughs> so I love that and I yeah. love like, I truly your designs are like they fit and they're so they're so beautiful and they're so comfortable but yeah. like also fashionable you're just you have such a gift if people need to see this whole little thing is <laughs> you can't actually see everything every part of it but it's okay we see the shoes it is literally the oh, thank you. double piece and all of your stuff i mean i've gotten to wear some of your other stuff and I know. I love dressing you. Obsessive. <laughs> I love that. That makes me, and that's what's important. Is like when someone wears one of my pieces, like how it makes them feel, and like I want them to just like immediately feel like you know amazing and like like lift their energy up. That's what's most important, you know, in fashion. Be able to express 100. yourself. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So that's that. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I was, I'm in the middle, 
I was in the middle of working on my first fall collection and like, I don't know, I'm listening to a lot of different people in the industry right now and, and people, you know, scientists and what's going on. And like, I'm hearing like award seasons might not even happen at the end of this year, the beginning of next year, because there's no films that are being like, you know, out like no, you know, like no movies, you really, you know, like a lot of movies are being postponed and like our films still going to be like our, our artists, our musicians still dropping albums. Like, I guess they are because people are still they're dropping, I mean, mostly singles, I would say, but, like, Dua Lipa dropped an album. Jonas Brothers dropped two singles today. Oh, they did? Yes. Oh, I have to go check it out. They're amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, people have been dropping songs. I think that's sort of, like, what's, which is beautiful. It's keeping you, yes. like, okay, we need more information. But movies, I was thinking that yesterday. I'm like, how, how are people going to make movies and TV shows? Yeah. Like, you really, you really cannot. Because yeah. the boom stands, and then the, but I'm not even an actor, but I, you know, I can imagine. Like, I'm glad we got to see Westworld, though. I would have been sad if Westworld got pushed back again. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, so I don't know. So I like a part of me is like, do I still launch a, my fall collection that I've been working on or not? I don't know. So we'll, I'll just go with the flow. <laughs> That's, I mean, I can't wait to see what you are coming up with. And it's what. my first fall collection, so I'm super excited. God. Yeah. I can't wait. Look, okay, if I go close, you can see my little breakout. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. First, we're on the forehead, and then it was all here, and that was where my... I my think the mask. I feel like I broke out <laughs> here, too, because maybe I was reusing my mask, and I'm trying to rash in my mask, you know? Oh. So I thought maybe that's it. So just washing masks. This is that's what I thought. I don't know. Oh. Why am I breaking out of here? I also wonder if the mask that I have, the fabric might, yeah, be, like yeah. an acne thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any sneak pieces of your previews of your collection of the fall collection? Yeah. Um, I I do, and I oh, I mean. <laughs> I can grab, yeah, let me see. I can grab one. Okay, let me grab one. Yes. Hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> and then for now, I'm just going to sit here and So on. this is, um, can you see it? Oh, sick. But it's like long. Um, oh my gosh. It's called the Negev 2.0 which is like the Negev dress that I designed in my first season, but I cut out the waist and like added this like sheer. So Ooh. it's like sheer. Oh. And it like just scoops like right under. So it's just very different. Like I want it, like I've been working on some very like different stuff for the fall, but this is a little sneak peek. So. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have it in white right now, but we'll probably do it in like other colors. And, Ooh. Yeah. I love, I feel like you're, something that you're so good at also is, like, catering to a woman's body. Like, you, sh you, sh your shapes, like, show such, um, like, all the parts that were, like, need to be a show. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, yeah, so good. I know that you have a new song out. I don't know if you want to share it or play it with us. I don't. <laughs> I would love to hear it. <laughs> well, my, so I actually texted my producer. This is so funny, but I, I don't think you know this, but I have two brothers that are like incredible guitar players. Really? And they're really amazing. And I think it sort of made me want to rebel, if nothing else, and just not play guitar. Like I was like, I don't want to play guitar because... You're going to be the singer. I'm the singer. I'm the singer. <laughs> and so instead, I've just been focusing on writing. So basically, my producer sent me a track, like a version of Only Love, the song that I have out now. Mm -hmm. And I could straight up sing it to you like a karaoke track. If you want, I mean, it's, it, I, I, I think people appreciate it so much right now, music, like, music has been the only thing that has gotten me through the last, like, two and a half months of quarantine, so, like, if, I'm so happy I have it. Oh my gosh, 100%. Oh. I mean, just, you know, I feel like we should all just lay our pride out, you know, and just, I'll just sing that to a karaoke track. Let's do it. <laughs> this is only love. 
stuff I work with this one producer named Jamie Sirota and he produces all of it and I you know have a lot of feelings and emotions and so I just pour out whatever I'm going through with him which is super super nice to have like a collaborative partner yeah and uh I'm so proud of it so we have this song and then we have I have four others that I'm gonna release I think I'm gonna release one soon really can we get another IG live to hear it but I need to I need to um uh have cover art and I don't have that so I'm not sure ah uh, how I'm gonna do that yeah like how you, do you have to you mean you have to shoot like yourself on the cover yeah you gotta get creative you know right, I'm gonna shoot need to, from home I have an idea of what I want to do I'm just unsure if I'm gonna be able to do it myself <laughs> yeah. but hopefully I can I mean my husband I'm sure can help me too which is nice but yeah. um yeah it's called symptoms which okay. is really funny because I mean not funny that's horrible to say but it, <laughs> in light of everything it has nothing to do with that it has yes. everything to do with um internal symptoms like struggles internally I so, can't wait to hear it hey you. I love it. Okay, I have one more question. Wait, do you watch um, the Bachelor's new? The, do you watch it? Okay, Wait. I just watched. <laughs> I love I, it. Do you like it? <laughs> well, I was laughing so hard that they kept saying, like, you know, at the Bachelor, we're all huge fans of the stars born, and I was like, that's such a random connection. Yeah, it like, was a really weird. Yeah, I thought that was weird. <laughs> and I kept saying it. But I, I mean, it, it, I love that you love it. I think that's so awesome. And I think I, I have a sort of unique perspective. Tell me your, I'll tell me yours and I'll tell you mine. What's your perspective? Like, you? Well, I thought, oh, I have, I have this quality where I like to positive gossip. Yeah. 
where I like to like just say good things. Um, so I'm struggling with that here. Um, <laughs> I, like, oh, okay. So uh, do you want me to help you or should I? Yes, you should. Okay. So I was really hesitant on, on this when I saw the previews. I was like, oh my God, like they just, they took away Bachelor in Paradise because of this. And I'm like, like, is it going to be good? I don't know. But I was like, I'll give it a try. And I, at first I was a little like, I don't really care for the drama, but the musical part, I like sometimes cry. Like, um, there is, who is, oh my God, I'm blanking on the name, but there's this one couple and they're so in love. And I'm like, did they really just fall in love that easily over music? And when they sing together, it's like they harmonize and they are just so beautiful together. And I just watch it for the musical part, like when they have to perform. Like, I just love it. And then there's people who, the couples you see, like, who aren't really connecting, and you're kind of like, they're not really in love. And then they go up on stage, and then their music is, like, like horrible, and you're like, see, because that connection's not there. Like, so I don't know. I kind of, like, being sold on this whole, like, if you're really in love, then your music will be as good as, like, your love is. Do you think that's true? Or is it just me being sold as an audience in this whole show? <laughs> I think that's so beautiful that you are receiving that. <laughs> I I think I was sort of like, I mean, you're already like tapping into it, but like the performances, it's a bit hard because musically, yeah, you do have that connection. Um, but I'm also like, I don't know if it's that common <laughs> that yeah. like everybody falls in love um, musically because in some ways, like there's a lot of like, jealousy and competition in those I, yes you know? I saw that in one of the couples right where it was like they looked like they were both trying to compete for the stage and they weren't really just like seen together because they're in love exactly and like can you can you fall I don't know the, the concept of it gives me so much joy just because it's so out there to me that I'm like I love that they're going for this and they're like trying to sort of you know, prove that those are connected because they are connected. But I think a lot of the times it doesn't have to be like fully romantic. But, but so looking at the couples, I'm like, there's no way that they're all even, maybe even any of them yeah. are in love from, for that reason. Yeah. But also, sure. I guess you could, I don't know. It, it really, I fast forwarded only to the music parts because as, like, you know, because I sing as well, I'm just like, oh, I'm just so curious. But one of the girls has, two of the girls have incredible voices. I don't know their names, but this I know, I'm forgetting their names too, but I know their faces. Yeah, like one of them's like blonde, I don't even know what yeah. is happening, but it, that show is wild. It's, it is bringing me joy during this time. That in like the circle and love, wait, love is blind. Love is blind. That is a good one. You what is that? that? It's a reality show. Oh. And it's outrageous. You should watch it. Okay. <laughs> I will. I'm trying to find the the uh, beautiful and bachelor. Listen to your heart. <laughs> Listen to your heart. Please <laughs> go and boy. I know. I don't know. I'm such a sucker. But anyways, I did want to ask you, like, if you, if what you thought of it. Do you, so you said that your husband is in music too. Do you guys play, do music together or no? We do. Um, well, we used to a lot more. And then he he works on the, the management side of music. Yeah. But he's an amazing producer and an incredible bass player and guitar player. Yeah. So, yeah. So we we only actually now we've started to create some more music together, um, which has been really fun. Uh and he's so supportive of what I do and, like, so encouraging, which really helps um, yeah. when you feel discouraged, you know? Yeah. Or when you just need the extra... We all need to feel like what we're doing matters. A purpose. You yes. know? Yeah. yeah. Gives us a purpose, for sure. And it's it's really amazing. Um I Wait, found their names, but what was that? <laughs> found I found their names. Wait, this is the, it's Brie and Chris. Brie is this one. Can you see? Oh yeah, and then that's Chris. 
Oh yeah. You know who whose voices I love? It's actually it's different people. That's I so like I, well, they're so in love together and like when they sing it's so oh, beautiful. Oh, who do you is it um Rudy? Oh gosh, I should look it up because I'm unsure. It's like a Yes. Yeah, she has an amazing voice. She has an incredible. Her, yeah, her, her voice is amazing. I do. She's there. I like them too. They're about like the same neck and neck. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh good. Really in love. I love that. <laughs> Aww. Well, good. I'm glad we got to catch up, and I'm glad that we got to hear your song. I'm gonna go like it on Spotify and keep it yes, on my list. Too. Yeah. Have feelings to it. Feels it. <laughs> Any um well thank you guys for joining us and uh we'll be around. Woo yeah. <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs>